Welcome to Excel and Business Math, video number 29. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about time number formatting and time calculations in Excel. Now, here are our topics. The number one topic is we got to figure out when we put 8 a.m. into a cell, what is really underneath the time number formatting. Once we figure that out, then we can create awesome payroll templates like this, where we actually have employees put their time in, time out. Then we can calculate these four formulas down here, hours work, gross pay, deduction, and the day's pay, because this is for a single day, or also known as net pay. Now let's go over to our first example, time, number formatting, and calculations. Now, time number formatting. Before we read this, let's just try to enter a time into the cell B7. Now, we enter time with the hours, then a colon, the minutes, then a colon, then the seconds, and then we put a space, and then either AM or PM. So if we want to enter 8 AM, we enter the hours in first. I'm going to put 8. Then a colon. As soon as you put a colon next to a number, you are instructing Excel that this is not a normal number. This is a time number. Then we put the minutes. In our case, 0, 0. If we wanted to put seconds, we would then type a colon, 0, 0. If we enter it right now, it would be military time without AM or PM. But if we want AM or PM, we have to put a space. Now, I'm not going to put a space. I'm going to type AM. Now, I have the time number, but no space before the AM. So when I hit Enter, we have to remember back to video number four. We actually saw this exact example back in video number four. As soon as we see default alignment to the left, we know that Excel thinks this is text, not a number. And time is supposed to be a number. But no problem, we made a mistake entering it. So if I double click to put it back in edit mode with my cursor right between the 0 and the A, when I type a space, now when I hit Enter, default alignment to the right, we know that Excel thinks this is a number. And that's correct. When we enter time, it is a number. Now I want to do the same example again, but I want you to notice up in the number group, it says general. As soon as we type a number in a colon, Excel is programmed to apply a time number formatting. So you ready? 8 colon 0, 0. And this time, I am going to put a space. Not only that, but I don't have to type capital AM or PM. If I put lowercase, it'll know and make it automatically uppercase. Now, if I look up into the number group, you could see the general number formatting. As soon as I control enter to enter this, up in the number group we have custom. That means a custom time number format has been applied. Now, what do we know about number formatting so far in this class? We know that anytime we choose any one of these number formattings, it is a facade. That means that what we see on the surface of the spreadsheet is not always what is underneath in the cell. Now, time number formatting and date number formatting that we'll learn about next week are both number formattings that will not allow us to look up to the formula bar to see what the actual number is that sits in the cell. You could see we entered 8 AM, but it will always enter hour, minutes, seconds. So the way we're going to look underneath and see what actually got entered in the cell is by applying the general number formatting. So I'm going to come up to the drop down and select general. Now, before I do that, I should have taught you this a long time ago. You got to find the tilde or grave accent key on your keyboard. Because if you want to apply the general number formatting with a keyboard, the keyboard shortcut is Control Shift tilde. So that's what I'm going to use. It's exactly the same as coming up, clicking General. So you're ready? Control, Shift, tilde, grave accent key. And just like that, we've wiped away our time number formatting. 
Now, anytime we apply general, it's like our eraser. It'll remove whatever number formatting's on the surface and show us actually what's in the cell. We can look up to the number group and see that keyboard really did apply the general number formatting. Now, what is 0.33333? How does that represent 8 AM? Well, anytime we enter time using 8 colon minutes seconds, Excel will take whatever time we enter it and think of it as an integer and divide it by 24. Now, we only entered an hour here. But behind the scenes, this is what Excel did. It said, oh, you want 8 AM? I'm going to divide whatever time you enter by 24 and return underneath the number formatting a decimal. That represents the proportion or the fraction of a 24-hour day. Now, in this cell, we entered 8 AM and then wiped away the custom time number formatting using general. But let's do the reverse. I want, I want to prove this to myself. 8 divided by 24, well, that's like a fraction. 8 divided by 24 reduces to 1 third. And as a decimal, it's 0.3333. But can I apply time number formatting? You betcha. Number group, drop down, and let's apply time. And just like that, now it is displayed as 8 AM. The reason this is important is because we can't do time math, like have an employee enter a time in and time out. If we don't know what actually is underneath in the cell, we can't make a formula. Now, we'll look at a formula in just a second, but think about what that means. If I enter 12 AM, well, that's actually 0. 8 AM. Well, 8 divided by 24 will give me a decimal of 0.3333. 12 PM, since that's exactly halfway through the day, 12 divided by 24 is the same as reduced fraction 1 half or decimal 0.5. 3 PM, well, that would be 12 hours plus 3 is 15 divided by 24. That would give us the decimal 0.625. If we enter minutes and seconds, whatever fraction of an hour that is, Excel will take it, total up all the hours, divide by 24 to give us a decimal. These are the decimals that we're going to have to consider when making formulas about time. Now, it's no big deal. What did Excel do? Excel divided by 24. So when we come down here and look at our first example, a payroll example where we have time in and time out, and we need to calculate total hours worked and then multiply total hours worked by the employee's hourly wage to get gross pay, we have to remember that when we enter time, Excel divided it by 24. Now, all that means for us is we're going to have to remember to bump it back up to actual hours by multiplying by 24. Now, let's see what that means. Let's enter time. So this employee came in at 8 AM, so 8 colon 0, 0 space AM, enter, and they left. Four hours later, 12 colon 0, 0 space PM. Now, we can do this one in our head if we were doing payroll. 12 hours through the day minus 8 hours gives us 4. So 4 times 2125, and that would be our gross pay. Well, let's just try and make our formula. Now, anytime we do time and we're trying to figure out how many hours between a time in and time out. This is a payroll example, but how long a truck is out on a job, the time they got there, the time they left. Anytime you have two times and you want to figure out how many hours between, you take the later time minus the earlier time. So let's try that. Equal sign up arrow, that's the later time, minus up arrow, up arrow, that's the earlier time. Now, when I hit Enter, Remember, we've seen this many times in the class. Those cell references will pull the number formatting. So I'm going to hit Enter, and it looks like 4 AM. Well, the AM part is kind of annoying, but it sort of looks like four hours. Well, let's just try to multiply that times 2125. Equal sign, four hours times, and then up arrow to get my 2125. When I hit Enter, the employee is going to be mad. $3.54, it's not the correct $85. It's because what happens? 
When we use cell references in formulas, they do not see number formatting. They look at the underlying number. Enter. Let's use our little trick we just learned. Either go up to the drop down for general or use Control Shift tilde. There you go. 4 divided by 24, that's the decimal. That's the proportion of a 24 hour day. So, how do we get that decimal back up to actually 4 hours? Now, I'm going to Control Z to bring back the number formatting. F2, we multiply this times 24. Remember, for each one of those times, Excel divided by 24. So anytime we're calculating total hours, we have to multiply by 24 to bump it back up. Now, that won't work because multiplying comes before subtracting. And we need to subtract before we multiply. So we're going to, in parentheses, subtract the two times and then bump it back up to 24. When I hit Enter, uh-oh, now we have a number formatting problem. It already has time number formatting. We need to remove it using our drop down in general or Control Shift tilde grave accent key. And there we have it, four hours. So four times 2125 is properly 85. And of course, the employee is much happier with 85 bucks. All right, let's go look at our second example here, a homework tracker. You set this up, start time, end time, because you know you always study in the morning. Then you go off to school and work. And then it's not till later in the evening that you study. And we want a total number of hours studied for the day. Well, we can do two different formulas to calculate number of hours. All right, you ready? The base formula for number of hours worked is always going to be equals, in parentheses, whatever the later time is. And you subtract whatever the earlier time is. You put that in parentheses, and then you have to bump it back up by multiplying by 24. Remember, when we enter the time into Excel, Excel divides by 24. So that formula will work and enter. So you work 2.5 hours. Down here, same formula equals in parentheses later time minus earlier time, close parentheses, and bump it back up, multiply by 24, and enter. So we have two individual calculations. Now we need to add them. I'm simply going to equals up arrow plus, and then up arrow to get the earlier time, and enter. So the total is 3.75 hours. Now later, tomorrow, you can come in. You got up early. When I enter 6.30 and enter, the formula updates. Now I'm going to Control Z to undo that. Now we actually had to do one, two, three different formulas. We can actually combine all of this into a single cell formula. Now we could repeat that whole thing, put a plus symbol, and then repeat that whole thing. And that would work. But guess what? We can use the sum function and do these two individual calculations inside the sum function, and then multiply that by 24. So you're ready? An alternative to getting 3.75 for this example is alt equals. That's the sum function. It didn't guess right at all. I'm going to do the first subtraction later time minus earlier time. Now, we saw this earlier in the class. The sum function and other aggregate functions are awesome because you can put as many arguments as you want in. So that's the first calculation. But now I type a comma. Number two, I'm putting the second later time minus earlier time calculation right into the number two argument. So guess what? That'll be the decimal, the proportion of a 24-hour day that you worked in the evening. That'll be the proportion of a 24-hour day you worked in the morning. Some function will add them, and that decimal will represent the proportion of 24 hour of a 24-hour day that you studied. So now I simply multiply by 24 and enter. Now we know that that is number formatting 
And we don't want that there because what we want is total number of hours. So I'm either going to come up to the Home ribbon tab drop down for General or use Control Shift tilde Grave Accent. And there it is, 3.75. Now you can do this in the two-step method, especially when you're learning, right? Doing it two steps like this emphasizes each individual calculation and helps us learn it. But at some point, especially if you were doing a time sheet for employees and they had time in, time out, lunch, time in, time out, that formula, a single cell formula, might be more efficient. All right, let's scroll down. We have a payroll example here. Now we have our employees, the wage, time in, time out. Now we're going to need to do our hours worked formula. Then we calculate gross pay. That'll be hours worked times wage. Then from the gross pay, we have some tax deduction. And actually, later in the week, we'll have more specific videos about different types of deductions. But here we just have a single deduction. And then we'll calculate the pay for the day or the net pay. All right, so hours worked. The formula is always going to be equals in parentheses whatever the later time is minus whatever the earlier time is. We got to bump it back up times 24. Control Enter to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell selected. Double click and send it down. Go to the last cell and hit F2. I'm verifying that the two cell references are correct and Enter. By the way, when we type 24 into our hours work formula, we're not violating Excel's golden rule because that number is not going to change. All right, now we can do our gross pay. Notice we're going to multiply some number with lots of extraneous decimals times money. And for money, we have a requirement that we only have pennies, so we have to round. Not only that, but we're going to use the formula in subsequent formulas. So we have to use round equals round. In the number argument, I'm going to say, hey, give me hours worked times, and then arrow over to get our wage, comma. We're dealing with pennies. So for number of digits, we put A2. That says round to the penny. Those are both relative cell references. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Go to the last cell and hit F2 to verify. Sure enough, cell references are looking good. That also, of course, is a number that's not going to change, so we hard code it into our formula. Now the deduction. Oh, look at that. Lots of extraneous decimals. We've talked about this so many times earlier in the class. By now, we know we're dealing with money. We have extraneous decimals. We're required to round with money, so we are going to use the round function. right? in the number argument. I'm going to do left arrow. That's the gross pay. I want that as a relative cell reference. So as I copy the formula down, I'll get a different gross pay for each employee times up arrow. Up arrow, I'm going to hit the F4 key, because that is a tax rate that needs to be locked as we copy down. Comma, 2, because we're rounding to the penny. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Be sure to go to the last cell and hit F2. I'm verifying that that has remained locked. And sure enough, it has. Now I can calculate for this example, this is just the pay for the day. This is also known as net pay. Whatever your gross pay is minus all of your deductions. In our case, we just have one. That gives us net pay. So equals the gross pay minus deductions, Control Enter double click and send it down. Go to the last cell and hit F2. That is looking awesome. So we definitely applied our new knowledge of time number formatting. Anytime we enter a time, we know Excel divides by 24. So when we calculated total hours, we are smart enough to know what's under the time number formatting. We make the subtraction, later time minus earlier time, multiply by 24. Then we do gross pay deductions and net pay. All right, so in this video, we saw our first example of a payroll table. Next video, we'll learn a lot more. And we learned an important time calculation for hours worked, later time minus earlier time, times 24. And we learned for the first time about time number formatting. Now, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub. 
because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including next video, number 30, we'll do a more comprehensive timesheet example for the whole week, and then gross pay, including overtime pay using the if function. All right, we'll see you next video.